Unfortunately, like with many other things, Stan Lee and his in his statements are often just taken out of out of context. And, you know, you have people that have these like political or or, or social kind of motivations. Right. And so they want this something. They will take something that is wildly out of context and have it mean something that it's not. Right. And this is one that you've probably heard if, you know, it's in jest, obviously, when like I am or neurotic or someone else talks about Miles Morales being Miles Morales and, Sp and Spider-Man and Peter Parker rather being Spider-Man. Right. Um, I've spoken in detail. I have another gym masterpiece. Let's call it that for y'all talking about the unoriginality of, of Miles. But they get so Twitter weirdos get so. Uh, aggravated when you say that and in order to like justify let's say the laziness and the existence of Miles Morales they will use this statement in fact I want to go through a here in a bit let me let me it's not even playing yet here in a bit I'm going to show you guys a video but I want to give you the context of the video like right now for example someone re responding to this post here that I did of my previous video and they're saying, bro, even Stan Lee would say you're nuts uh, and uh, and he helped create Spider-Man. So essentially he's going to use this, this that we're going to watch here in a little bit. He's using this to basically say that, well, these are Stan Lee's views. And and because of this, it justifies Miles Morales existence. And I'm not even saying that stan lee didn't like miles morales and feel like felt like he shouldn't have uh, existed or anything i'm not making any of those claims i want to be very uh, uh clear about that what i am saying is that using this and you'll see people quote it as a means to say he he like would let's say let me say this some what i say about miles is somehow antithetical to what stan lee oh let's say this <laughs> What I say about Miles is somehow antithetical to Stan Lee's comments or his thought process, be it with the creation of Spider-Man or even Miles Morales itself. This is by far one of the worst examples to use in terms of what it is that I am specifically saying. Now, we're going to listen to this real quick. I'm going to turn up the audio. Let's listen to this. This is an interview. I think he does it with Larry King talking about Spider-Man. Now, let's listen to this. You know one of the greatest things about Spider-Man's outfit, his costume? What? He is completely covered. So any kid could imagine he's Spider-Man because no color of the skin shows. He could be black under that. He could be red. He could be yellow. He could belong to any race. And that True. wasn't done purposely. It was done accidentally. But I think it was the best thing we did, making him so that he could be anybody under that costume. Okay, so it is it is clear and obvious what it is that he means. Let me see if I can find like the con one of the comments of one of these crack smokers. Uh, like even like the guy that posted it says, "Remember that Stan Lee literally said that anyone could be Spider Man. So anyone bitching about Miles Morales being Spider Man and saying that he isn't Spider Man is objectively wrong." So they're using that that quote to say that but that's not that has nothing to do with what it is that that stan lee is saying in that quote it has nothing to do with miles morales or the creation of miles morales what he's saying and he explicitly states that he did it on accident it's kind of like even with the like whole uh civil rights and x-men it's the same thing it's like well i didn't try to do that it just happened to stumble across it right he says it was accident but it was a good idea looking at it in retrospect and that is that Spider-Man's entire body is covered. So anybody could imagine uh, themselves as it because anybody could cover themselves, right? You would know, uh, like, if, if he's fully covered, definitely if you put yourself in the universe of Marvel, you wouldn't have any clue what was under that Spider-Man suit unless you're watching the MCU where the actors uh, have baked into their audience that, or baked into their contract, excuse me, that they always have to show their faces uh, for X amount of times on the screens because of their brand. That's why you see all the time they have their like half suits on with the with their like if they're mad, if they, their suit has a mask, they always have it off, which doesn't even make any sense that they will walk around like that. That's all Hollywood stuff. Nonetheless, and if you're in Marvel's like actual world and you don't know the, these guys who are under the hero, yeah. 
or under the costume, you wouldn't know who they were, or who was behind it. And, you know, anybody could look like he says, like a kid or anybody can look and say, well, anybody could be that, including myself. Right. That's all he's saying. Right. It's not anything. Uh, it's not some old oh, well, it, it's who Sam Miles Morales is. It's not saying Eric July is Spider-Man per se. They can imagine themselves being Spider-Man is what the point is because he's covered. It's simple. It's not a rocket science here. But as with many other quotes, you get these definitely these social justice weirdos who sat up and try to hijack what the man said. And then they like use it to attack you in your position. Like, I'm not, it's not even saying that like Stan Lee is not perfect. Like there may be there's going to be things that I disagree with him. He I'm sure would disagree with me on various issues. That's what we're saying is that example is terrible. It's a god awful example, and it's completely out of context to the point in what you're making about Miles Morales. But these social justice idiots are the lowest of the low. And they will certainly use a dead man to perpetuate their own nonsense. And they'll take it out of context. Like when I said, and I always I refer to Stan Lee, that, remember that video that I did? Uh, I actually quote him in context. We see the video where he talks about he put social issues underlaying the plot but never wanted to beat the audience, but never to, to the point to where he felt like uh, he never wanted to beat the reader over the head is essentially what he said. And that was a direct quote uh, in the video because we watched him say it. I don't need to take it out of context, which is what so many of these weirdos do. Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Riververse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Riververse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, EricDJuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters.